In the last section, we made use of Docker volumes to automatically get changes that we make to our source code reflected inside the container. Now, the only downside to this approach is the ridiculously long Docker run command that we have to execute at our terminal. If we stop our running container, you can press up arrow again, depending on your terminal, to get that command back up. And so you can see that there's a lot of options on here. We have to specify the port, we have to specify two volumes, and then we have to specify the image ID. So clearly, this is kind of a pain right now to run this command long form. Well, quick reminder, what did we learn about just a moment ago? Just a moment ago, we spoke about Docker Compose. And the whole purpose of Docker Compose is to make executing Docker Run easier. And so even though this time around we have a single container image, or excuse me, a single Docker image, we can still make use of Docker Compose to dramatically simplify the command we have to run to start up our Docker container for development purposes. So let's create a Docker Compose file. And inside that file, we're going to encode the port setting and the two volumes that we need to create inside of the container. I'm going to flip on over to my code editor. And inside of my root project directory, I'm going to make a new file called docker-compose.yml. Now the compose file that we're going to create is going to look rather similar to the one we just put together. We'll first begin by specifying a version of three inside of quotes. We'll then set up a list of all the different services or containers that are going to be created when we run Docker Compose up. Now, previously, you recall we named our initial service something like Node App. We could call this one React App. We can call it Web, anything you want. I'm going to go with Web here just because it makes a little bit of sense. Next, we need to specify the image, or excuse me, the Docker file that we're going to use to create this initial container. Before, we were able to just specify build dot. However, when we use build dot, that assumed that we had a Docker file inside of the current working directory. Let's try just sticking with build dot for right now and seeing if that's going to work out, even though our file name is a little bit different. Let's just see what happens. The next thing we're going to specify is ports. So remember, we can specify a list of ports here. So to indicate a list, we put down a single dash. I'll then put down my quotes, and I'll say that I want to map up port 3000 outside of the container to 3000 inside the container. And then finally, and this is the real good part, this is the part where we can do a shorthand for specifying our different volumes. We'll say volumes, a dash, and then we'll say that we want to do app, node modules. Remember this one right here is essentially going to say, do not try to map a folder up against app node modules inside the container. And then as a second entry, we'll do a dot, which indicates the current working directory, a colon, and then we'll say that we want to map that folder outside of the container into the app folder inside, excuse me, the dot, so the current folder outside the container to the app folder inside the container. There we go. And that's pretty much it. So now, anytime that we want to start up our development instance or development container, we don't have to do that really long docker run command like this one right here. Instead, all we should have to do is docker compose up. Let's try running it right now and just seeing what happens. So again, inside of my front end folder, I'll do docker compose up. Now, as you might have expected, we're getting an error message right here that says cannot find a docker file because when we put together our initial service or the initial container right here, we said, oh yeah, build using the current directory, but inside the current directory, we don't have a Docker file. We have a dockerfile.dev file. Let's take a quick break. In the next section, we're gonna figure out how we can force Docker Compose to build our image for this web service right here using that de dot dev file. So quick break and I'll see you in just a minute.